80% of all US dollars in existence were printed in just the last two years. This is a stat that I'm sure you've heard over and over and over again. There are countless articles stating this online and many videos here on YouTube telling us the same thing. I believe this stat as well until very recently. I'm here today to tell you that this is misleading, if not blatantly wrong. Hi everybody, it's Prashant here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be proving this claim that 80% of all US dollars were printed in the last two years is wrong. I'm going to be using some graphs and somewhat dense definitions, so go ahead and strap in, destroy the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's go. Take a look at this graph. This is a graph that is often cited by these articles to justify this claim. Now let me make sure I say this right away. This is a real graph published by the St. Louis Fed. It is not modified, it is not doctored in any way. This is the real deal. So what is this graph showing us? This graph is showing us a measure of money supply, specifically M1 over a period of time. You can clearly see that M1 money supply was about $4 trillion before the pandemic started and is now $20 trillion. So 80% of all money, $16 trillion, was printed in the last two years, right? Wrong. What's missing here is context and understanding. There are different measures of money supply, namely M0, M1, M2, and M3. M0 is basically all hard currency in circulation, literal money, right? M1 includes M0 plus any cash that is held in checking accounts and other checkable deposits. The thought is that people can very easily and quickly access the money in their checking accounts. Remember that neither of these measures include the currency held in bank reserves since this money is not actually in circulation. It is in reserve. M2 includes all M1 plus savings deposits and CDs. So everyone's saving accounts and certificates of deposits is included in M2. M3 includes all of M2, so everything that, has, that we've talked about before, plus institutional deposits. Now let's forget about M0 and M3 for a few minutes, okay? Let us take a look at this new graph. This is another graph by the St. Louis Fed. This one just provides a little bit more context. This graph shows us the level of M1 as well as M2 over time. The green line shows the measure of M2, which went from about $15 trillion before the pandemic to $20 trillion now. The red line shows M1, which is the same line we saw in the previous graph, going from $4 trillion before the pandemic to $20 trillion. Obviously, we see this huge jump right after the recession ended in 2020. But look at the blue line. This is showing the currency component of M1 and notice now that it is not plotted all the way. This is because this measure has been discontinued. This is the context we need to learn. If I were to scroll down on this page, we see four very important paragraphs which I'm going to read now. Before April 24th, 2020, savings accounts were not part of M1. Limitations in the number of transfers from savings deposits made savings accounts less liquid than M1. M1 consisted of currency, demand deposits, and other highly liquid accounts called other checkable deposits or OCDs. An example of OCDs are the demand deposits at thrifts. But the limitation on these number of transfers was lifted on April 24th as an amendment to Regulation D, which specifies how banks must classify deposit accounts. Savings deposits are now just as liquid and convenient as currency, deposits, and OCDs. To reflect this fact, savings deposits are now included in M1. The uh, Federal Reserve graph compares the new M1 with what would have been M1 under previous regulations when it included only currency, demand deposits, and OCDs. From May 2020 on, M1 comprises currency, demand deposits, and a new item called other liquid deposits. These are the OCDs plus savings deposits. Previously, the OCDs consisted about 17% of M1. Now the OCDs consist about 70% of M1, 1.7 to 7.0. As of May 2020, 
the old M1 would have had a value of around $5 trillion. The new M1 has a value of $16 trillion, a substantial increase and a clear break in the time series. So what we're really seeing here is a reclassification of savings accounts. Yes, money in circulation has increased from $4 trillion pre-pandemic to $5 trillion in 2020, maybe $6 trillion today. But this reclassification of savings accounts has led to this M1 graph rocketing upward to $20 trillion. If we look at the M2 line, the one at the top, we see that it went from 15.5 trillion pre-pandemic to 19.8 trillion now, an increase of $4.3 trillion, which is an increase of about 21%. It is still a significant increase, but nowhere close to the 80% number being touted around everywhere. When we're talking about personal finance and we're talking about the economy, it is important to really try and understand what the numbers are telling us and why they look like they do. As a person who works with numbers all day, I can tell you that numbers can often be twisted to tell any story that it is wanted. Repeating a stat is easy, but understanding the context behind numbers can be tough, so people often don't do it. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, I wanna thank you for being here. And if you don't mind, please go ahead and click the like button and the subscribe buttons for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.